Hello, I'm Rebecca Schwartz and I'm a singing teacher and choir leader and performer and I was talking to one of my, some of my choirs quite recently, well not recently, before we um, were not allowed to meet, so we were meeting in the park and there's quite a few members of my choir who were nurses and they were talking about how incredibly tired their voices were getting when they were, um, when they were mask wearing at work and I started thinking quite a lot about it as well as noticing ways that I was struggling when I was wearing a mask, because we were wearing masks and singing outdoors, very spaced out, um, not spaced out, but spread apart. And, and so I was thinking about mask wearing. And I've done it, finally got around to doing a little blog. So it's on my website, rebeccaschwartz.co.uk. Um, it's not yet, but it will be. And I wanted to talk through it because it's actually quite practical with quite a few things I need to explain. So the first thing that I think you can do when you're wearing a mask is make sure that your breathing is as low in your body as you can. So check that you're not panic breathing. If you're panic breathing, then you're gonna notice it'll be high up. And for a lot of people wearing a mask does make you feel like you're panicking. Um, so just check. And first thing I want you to do is notice, put your hands on your chest and notice if you're breathing really high up. If the expansion is there, so that's me showing you a chest breath. And then notice down your sides. If when you breathe in, if you get any movement into your sides, so any movement lower down. If you're really fancy, you might get movement into your back, which you may not be able to see on the video. If you've got any movement lower down in your abs, not suggesting that your lungs are down there because they're not, but just suggesting that you might get a really nice sense of um, of abdominal movement in that area. So, basically, if you can, first thing you need to do to get this movement is to relax your abs. If you're somebody that's got very tightly held stomach muscles, maybe, um, maybe you work out, maybe you're a dancer, or maybe you're somebody who used to be overweight and then holds it in all the time, it can take a lot of psychological to let go of your abs. But the best thing I've been told that's always available to you is bad hula hooping. I'm not sure you can see my bad hula hooping looking gloriously bad hula hooping. Uh, so if you do bad hula hooping, it will disengage that whole thing and just let your belly be as soft as it can be, these abdominal muscles, be as soft as it can be. And the other thing you can do is slow down your breathing. Let it get really, really slow and take time to breathe in. Personally, I'm not used to uh, doing lives yet. In fact, I'm still pretty nervous of doing them. So I need to do this when I'm doing this. And I've got my hands here, you can't quite see. I'm trying to move far enough back, get my hands here. And I breathe in, I relax my abdominal muscles to let this area get slightly bigger because the diaphragm is dropping. I'm not gonna go into that in loads of detail, but as I'm talking lots and lots and lots, my tummy muscles are going in. And then to breathe in, you need an expansion. And there are lots of discussions about this in the singing teacher world. But some people think the expansion should be here. Some people think the expansion should be here. I think the expansion should be pretty much everywhere if it can be. But that is something you would want to look at with somebody who has lots of knowledge about breathing. But if it's not here, you're probably doing pretty well. Now, the next thing is about clarity. And the first comment I've got here is, if you're in summer with a load of background noise, it's going to be so tiring to speak with a mask on. By the way, if anybody is here and they're commenting, I will check on my other page in a minute, but I'm, I'm not there right now. <laughs> so I'm, I'm trying to do the video and I'll take any questions if anybody is there afterwards. So the thing about speaking with a mask, it's much harder to be heard. So if you can, don't, don't do it in a place that's loud. Just wait, wait until it's quieter. That also does actually apply when you're um, when you're not wearing a mask, depending on what happens after this lockdown. But that's a whole other discussion because aerosols are much further projected when we're loud. So it's really a good idea to try and go somewhere quiet. And if you are somewhere that's very loud, it's worth asking the management if they can turn down the volume of any background noise, if you do, like any background music. And another thing, if you can, if you're this way inclined, is to use actions. I think that would be really good fun, but you've got to be somebody that likes the idea of doing that. 
so it's either gonna it's either gonna work for you or not. Now I'm gonna talk a little bit about diction and clarity. And the trick here is to be clearer rather than louder. And the trick to be clearer is to really know where you're making those consonants and really take time to make them. So slowing down and making your consonants really, really clear. <laughs> and it must sound a little bit like you're being patronising, but if you're going to look after your voice and make sure that you're not pushing, then let yourself take time over this. Now, the other thing, I've, there's loads of things, I've got so many things to share, is nasality. Nasality is just when you're speaking and some of the air is coming out of your nose. So you can hear that I've got a bit of nasality coming on. And if I pinch my nose, you can hear that it's, um, it's suddenly sounding quite muted. So if I'm being quite nasal and I'm sending the air to my nose, which is absolutely fine. It's a matter of taste and opinion whether you like nasality, but it does affect clarity in a lot of your sounds. So if you're speaking and then you pinch your nose and you notice that it sounds really different, <laughs> then you probably might want to look at nasality and how to reduce nasality in your speaking voice. There are lots of sounds you do need nasality in, such as B, P, B, P, K, G, N, N, M, M, loads of them. Um, I reckon if you were to go on YouTube, you'll find a load of videos. It is all about the soft palate. I'm not going to go into it here, and I'm happy to help you. I um, I actually have a plan for a video about nasality for my Vocal Explorers membership group. Uh, we meet twice a month, and the next time we meet, we're going to be looking at nasality. So if you do want to know, get in touch. And uh, marvellous. Right. Another thing is to add brightness to your voice. This is really often called twang. And there's lots of discussion about how it works. And I thought it worked in a particular way. I've been teaching about 15 years teaching singing. And I thought twang worked in a particular way. And I was in a workshop this weekend and somebody said, no, twang isn't that. So it's really interesting. But twang is basically, or brightness is what I'm going to try and call it, is when you add a certain amount of ring to your voice. And you know when you're on a train or public transport and you can hear that person and you can hear them over everybody else. And chances are that they have that ring. Now, my favourite way to develop that ring in your voice is to just do an impression of Janice from Friends. Oh my God, Chandler Bing. I'm sorry if that hurt your ears. So I am really good at twang. Um, but playing with it and just messing about with twang, you will get heard more in a busy place and you will find your voice projects better. Particularly if you're doing oral twang as opposed to nasal twang, which is going to be muted through your nose. So, this is great, right, I'm much less nervous now pretending there's nobody here. Um, yeah, other, there's lots of um, people tend to think of, Ameri well, British people tend to think of American people as having very twangy voices. They don't all, but a lot of them do. And we also have a lot of twang down in the hen counties. So just find a voice that, that kind of is like yours, maybe for some twang, if you're up for doing that. It does, you've got to be that sort of person, like I said before about something else, you know, if you're going to use your hands, you've got to be like that, it's got to feel comfortable, but it will mean you get heard. <laughs> you sound lovely. <laughs> oh my Lord. Um, another thing, going back to this, when you are trying to be heard, when you're speaking is, again, making sure your breath is low. You might be finding, and I'm going back to it, it's so important, you might find that the minute you start speaking, it gets back up here again. So just drop it down, let your breath flow. And <clears throat> look for a mask that has more space. And this doesn't just apply to singers and performers or anybody that's speaking a lot, it applies to anybody. Um, there are lots of singers masks out there. I've got a link, but that doesn't mean that I'm only endorsing that particular singers mask, but um, something where the mask is pulled away from your face, but it's still really tightly closed in. So a mask that's further away. I have a destroying a runaway pen right now. <laughs> so I've got a few little passing notes in how to care for your voice more generally. And I'm going to go through them really, really quickly. Um, generally how to care for your voice, hydrate, drink. And the thing I heard recently was pee clear, pee pale, don't pee clear, which was new to me. But um, yes, so peeing pale, drinking that much reduce your voice use. 
if you use your voice a lot, if you are a professional voice user, if you work in a call centre, you're a teacher, opera teachers are having such a hard time vocally at the moment, and obviously in lots of other ways, if there's anything you can do to reduce your voice use and just drop down and pause, have vocal rest moments in, in your day, schedule them. When you've finished teaching or you've finished a shift or you've finished whatever it is you're doing, just be silent for a few minutes and give your voice the gift of rest. Um, and yeah, schedule proper rest into your day. Avoid things that you know irritate your voice. So it might be foods that, that are irritating, probably they maybe give you some reflux. If you're aware of that, avoid them. Airborne irritation, irritants. And I remember being really shocked when I was told that um, plugins are really bad. Personally, I won't go in a room where somebody's used hairspray. Um, but you'll know if these things irritate your voice. But if you're finding your voice is more, more tired, that was great grammar. If you're finding your voice is more tired since using a mask more, then start noticing these things. If somebody's spraying deodorant agitates your voice, then avoid it. And if you spray deodorant agitates your voice, then try and find another, another way to get deodorant. Warm-ups and stretches. Loads of free warm-ups on the internet. I've got a free warm-up that I that you get access to if you sign up for my mailing list. And um, I love giving my voice, what I call giving my voice a hug, which is singing through a tube into water. I have a video that's on the link of how I do that. There are loads of fancy straws and tubes you can get. And obviously, um, if you feel like investing in something quite posh and fancy, there's loads of different tubes. This is from an aquarium and the right size is that you can get your finger, your little finger in the top and it's not too big. So I'm not going to talk any more about that because that's all on a link, but it's really nice. So if you want to know more and you want to get a lesson, then get in touch with me on my website and there's loads of links on my blog. I've got stretch and release exercises um, written out that you can link to. I've got a free, like I already said, you get a free warm up if you sign up to my mailing list. And if you want information about singing lessons, great. I've also got the Vocal Explorers membership, which is £20 a month. And you get two face-to-face -face on Zoom, two <laughs> live classes a month. And, um, and we, we look into whatever it is that you're interested in as a group. And we're also chatting on WhatsApp. If you've got any worries about your voice, then do seek help from a medical professional. Don't just let it go, seek help. There are also, um, also organisations that are really helpful. The British Voice Association has loads and loads of resources. Um, and it's got, um, like I said, there's links to this voice clinics in the UK. I know that at the moment they're not in person, they were in person, it's probably hard to get an appointment, but do, do persevere. And if you are a performer, you can get support from BAPAM and you can get support from Help Musicians UK. If you have any questions, it would be great to hear them.